interview is being conducted for Inverkeithing, People Making History, Oral History Project. My name is Dr Sue Morrison and the respondent is Lorna Muir. Mm -hmm. This is the 26th of October 2021 and the interview is taking place in Inverkeithing Civic Centre. Thank you very much for agreeing to be interviewed for the That's project. Fine. That's good. For the record, would you please confirm your full name? Lorna Muir. And what is your age or just your year of birth? 1944 and that makes me 77. Yeah. Where were you born, Lorna? I was actually born in Dunfermline Maternity Home, but mm -hmm. I lived in Inverkeithing, but that's where all the babies were born then, in the maternity home. And where do you live now? I live in Dogetty Bay. So when did you leave Inverkeithing? Oh, um, after I was married, I went down to London to live. Yeah, that would be 19, probably 71, I think. Okay, thank you. Um, you've still got links with Inverkeithing now? Oh, yes, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Um, just to kind of set the scene a little bit, can you tell me about your um, birth family? My mum and dad, mm. they were a nice couple. My dad uh, was very um, kind of canny and my mum was a little firecracker. She she led, the, there's only four of us, my sister and I. My sister was about nine years older than me and uh, I was just at primary school when she went to Canada. And she was there until she passed away two years ago. Um, and my mum and dad, they were, they were nice people, really nice people. And aunties and uncles were, had quite a big, big family, you know, extended family. Can you tell me what kind of work they did? My dad, he was steel erector. And my mum, paper mill. And I think she charred at one time for the Navy. When uh, the Navy was out at Dogetty Bay, it used to be Donny B, Donny Bristle. Uh, the Navy had quarters there, like the commanders and that all, and they had their chars. My mum done that. And then when we got older, I think she started back at the paper mill. She worked. At, she actually worked there after I got married. Um, she was in the same finishing house as I was. Oh, <laughs> my mum, yeah. Um, just before we kind of move on to you, um, you were telling me about your granddad. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me that story again, please? Well, he was, I think it was called Wells Paper Mill down there. But I think that was the name of it then. And uh, they were opening up a paper mill in India. can't really remember the region now. And uh, him and a lot of other men were sent, asked if they would go out and help get it started. I'm not sure, again, I'm not sure of the year, but probably the early 1920s, I think. Um, maybe the late teens, I'm not sure. But he went out there, and again, I don't know how long he was out there. Um, came back to get my granny and... Um, the five children that she had and he came home and she got pregnant while he was home and couldn't go back with them which was uh, the plan and he went, he went away back I take it he sailed back he wouldn't fly back but um and I don't know how long after that he died but the baby wasn't born so that meant my granny couldn't go out and she had her um four daughters and two sons eh, to bring up herself yeah so I never met my grandfather, but he looked a real sort of, you know, Jack lad. You know, with his white helmet on and all his whites on and looked the part of the gentleman, eh? You know? But my granny was to have a wonderful life out there. But it just never happened, eh? So all the, the children she had, they all started, they all went to paper mill. Went through the paper mill, eh? You know? So it's been a family thing. Okay. It was, yeah, she had really quite a hard time. Yeah. And I think... Uh, I remember my mum telling me that to keep all the children, she got 10 shillings from the government, you know, 10 shillings, see, that was, maybe then that was okay, but she, none of them went hungry or barefooted, they were all looked after, you know, because she was from a big extended family too, so they would all kind of rally around, I guess, you know, but um, it was quite sad, I've often thought about her being left, you know, to bring the kids up. But you see, the paper mill was in our blood, eh? But I was a lot, my daughters have not went to paper mill. My husband, he worked in the paper mill, but he was an electrician, so, yeah. So, tell me a bit, about, a bit more about the family background at the mill. Going back, what would you like to know? Who worked in the mill? 
Well, my mum's uh, three sisters. There was my mum, she was Chrissy, um, she was the eldest. Then there was my Auntie Joey, well, Johan was her proper name, and my Auntie Nan, which I think Agnes was her name, and my Auntie Wilma, she was the baby that was, shouldn't have been, you know, Williamina. And then the two sons were George and Johnny, and they went away to South Africa. I think it was before the Second World War, they went out to South Africa to start up a paper mill, you know, to help get a paper mill on the go. And they stayed, and I only met one of them when I was, oh, not that many years ago when them came back, but I never met the other one, George. He died um, quite young out in South Africa, eh? But um, to a lot of relatives in South Africa I never met either, you know. Probably there's some Indians as well that I've never met with my grandfather being out there, you just don't know. But, um, yeah, that's that's all I can really tell you, just, you know. Did your mum work in the mill when she was young? Yes. Mm -hmm. And do you know what job she did? She would start in the cutters, as I did, as everybody, you know, the women did, in the cutters where they, they cut the reels of paper into sheets. I think we were about a year, I think we were about a year on the cutters. And then we went upstairs to be a stamper for the guys that made all the bales of paper. You had to stamp up the sides where it was going to and what kind of paper it was. Um, and then I think you were about a year on that and then you went to the learners. And um, there was a lady, Mary McNeil, when I was there, I don't know who done it when my mum was there, but when I was there, it was a lady uh, called Mary McNeil and she taught you either to overhaul the paper or count it. And it was all done by hand then. So I was a counter. My mum was an overhauler. My sister was an overhauler, eh? Could you explain what an overhauler is? Overhauler, once it's been cut into sheets, you know, the paper, it's big, well, it's all different sizes. They, they, they had a table that they stood at and they had rubber things on their finger, like rubber tubing, really. And they overhauled and they looked at the paper to see if there was faults in it. And then once they, the box was filled, they brought it to me and I had a huge table and they each had their spot where they put their paper and I had to count it into reams. It was hard work, you know. You fanned it up and counted it four sheets at a time. And then folded it over and put it on a board and then it went away to the tyres where it was all bailed up, eh? How many um, pieces of sheeting was there to a ream? Oh, it depended. It could be 500. It could it all varied. It depended. You know, it could be 400, 450. I think the most was 500 sheets in a ream, yeah. How did you get the job in the first place? Um, well, as I said, my dad, he worked, he was a steel director, he worked all over the place, he went abroad, he, but mainly down south he worked in buildings and uh, I was not to go to the paper mill. I was had done shorthand in time. I was to actually get a job in the town hall, the town offices, but I didn't want that. So when my dad was away, I worked on my mum and she knew the foreman in the cutters, so Bob Day, and she went down, had a word with Bob D, and the next thing I knew I was started there. That's how I got the job. <laughs> no interview, no nothing, you know. My mother's word was good enough. And I started there on Monday morning, I think it was about seven o'clock in the morning you started here, till five. And it was a shock to the system. It really was, eh? You were only 15, but um, it wasn't hard work on the cutters. We got a lot of fun, we had a lot of fun, you know. Um, and when all the reels were cut into sheets, that was emptied and we had to sweep underneath, get all the paper dust up and away and then they would load it up and we'd, we just had to watch the sheets coming down and carry on with the boys and have a laugh and everything, keep an eye on that, it was good fun. Yeah. Was it dusty work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You used to have a little tin can with holes in it, you watered the floor before you swept it, yeah. And they swept, oh God, it sounds like a, the real old times, eh? Uh, yeah. Did you have anything over your face? No. Did anyone suggest that no. someone should? No, not in those days, no. No. Um, was it noisy? Yes, yeah. Can you tell me about that, please? That's how it was a shock to the system. I mean, it was noisy because there was, it was a big bottom half. There was two ends to the paper mill. There was what we called Betty Kerr's end. That was the boss at this end. And Kingy. That man's was his, that was his son and that was the other end. And this whole floor was like, there was this part here was cutters 
And then over here was the reelers, which cut reels of paper into big rolls, like, you know. Um, and it was noisy, yeah. But at first it was like, whoa. But then you got used to it, you know. Just got used to it. Health and safety. Was, <laughs> was there any... <laughs> Yes, this sounds like the Victorian times where it really was. <laughs> well, there maybe was, but yeah, I mean, you couldn't go under and clean the, the cutters when it was going. You know, you had to wait, and it was all lifted up, and we went down and, and cleaned it. Um, that's a bit, I think. Was yeah. there any extraction funds? or? Not that I'm aware of. No, there could have been, but not that I'm aware of. But there was a safety officer. Uh, I guess things were okay because I, I don't remember many folk getting hurt, you know. Um, the name of the safety officer, maybe somebody else that's coming in could tell you, um, he was the safety officer and I suppose he went round the mill and looked and checked things, eh? But um, no, not like now, not like now, eh? I mean, when I tell my daughters, they're like, oh, got away with that. Yeah, they did, yeah. But it was good money, that's why I wanted to there, eh? It was piecework, was it? Not at the cutters, but in, in upstairs in the counting and overhauling, it was piecework. Yeah. So you were paid weekly? Yes. Do you remember how much it was? Oh, I can't, it varied because it was piecework, eh? but it was, you were paid in money. You got a wee envelope on a Thursday, a Thursday night, it was great, you know. You got your pay packet, lined up at the office and got your little brown envelope. And you, you had already, well, it's kind of, I could work out what, roughly what I was going to get. And, um, and the overhaulers, they could, you know, it was, I can't remember now, but it probably doesn't sound a lot of money now, but it was good money. I was actually making more than my husband, well, when I married my husband, he worked in the dockyard, he left the paper and went to the dockyard. I was earning more money than him, yeah. Probably worked harder than him, probably, you know, but, um, yeah, it wasn't a bad place then. They changed all the system. There was, I think there was a new, there was, that used to be run by the family, the Smiths, the Smith brothers were sort of the top bosses. Um, and then I think they sold it to another company and it, it all changed, changed the system. And I got that, I, I just didn't want to work there anymore. Eh? You know, you when, when I was counting on a table, I'd be lucky if I had, paper like that you used to stand on a stool and count it and lift it and count it and lift it and then pile it on another board when they went into this help yourself to the paper and overhaul it sometimes I was away up here counting paper and I thought I just didn't want to do that anymore you know was that quite dangerous it was yeah I used to stand on a board you know big like a pallet you know mm. and then if it was really high you put another board on top and a stool I couldn't do that now because I would fall over, but um, but you were young, you just didn't think anything of it, you know. You said there weren't many accidents? Is it so? Not that I, I mean, the prob people would cut their cell with the paper, you know, it was easy to get a paper cut, but, and then counters always had sort of a sore arm with their going back and forward counting the paper, you know. But I, I can't remember, there probably was that I never knew about, eh, you know. Was there a, a kind of treatment centre nurse? Oh yes, there was. That's where the safety officer and there was a nurse there. And um, when you first started, you were taken every year for a medical, you know, and you were checked. Um, yeah, they, they did do that every year. And if you hurt yourself, if you, you got a bad cut with the people, you could go down to the, 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 the nurse and, and get seen to, yeah. Oh, there was a nurse there, yeah. Do you remember what the medical examination consisted of? I, I can remember sort of feeling my neck, you know, just thing like that. And I can't, maybe she took my blood pressure. I can't remember really. I was only 15 and I can't really remember too much about that. Maybe someone else that comes along can remember, but the, uh, you did get a, a check. Did they check your chest? No. For breathing? No. No. Did you ever have an x-ray or anything? If the X-ray unit came, they used to go round factories and that in those days, eh? And you, I always went for a chest X-ray for like there was TB was quite rife, so I always went for a, a chest X-ray. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Was TB rife in Inverkeven at the time? Not that I'm aware of, no, not really, but there was this, I mean, we had all jabs at the school and that for TB. Um, there probably was people in Inverkeven that had TB, yeah. That was just a, a wee aside, because you're quite right, I mean, the vans were going round. And the vans used to come round, same with the blood transfusion, they would come, you know, they would come and you could go and give a pint of blood. But you went right back to your work again, you know, it wasn't, you didn't get sent home for the afternoon to rest, eh? <laughs> Did you stay in the same job the whole time you were there? Well, I went After through... You, you went through the phases? Yes, yes, I left when I was a counter, yeah. Were you given specific training for those jobs? Yes, that was the, where it was called the learners. You were, you were taught, I was taught how to be an overhauler as well, but I... I, I would never have made a good overhauler. I just didn't like it, you know, but a counter. And I was tall, so it was better to be tall being a counter. Um, but you got trained properly. You were on the learners for a while, and um, sometimes if there was little packages were going out, like reams of paper about this size or half of that size, the learners used to have to wrap them up in little parcels, you know. And we could stand around the table and play, then it was quite good fun, you know. That was once in a while we got that. But no, we were we were trained, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good at wrapping Christmas presents then. Yeah, I am actually. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favourite um, part of the job? Probably being a counter, I think. Quite like that, yeah. Because you had so many women... My mother was in the finishing house, but she wasn't one of my girls. And luckily, they didn't. I didn't like to shout, "Mom!" Down the finishing house. See, she went to another counter. But you got. I think it was five or six women each. You know that they brought their paper, and you actually made their wages up because how many reams you got paid by how many reams they they done. Eh? But um, I think I think the cutters was fun because you were young and the learn the stamping I, was good fun. Because you had two guys, that, I, I don't know if they were in peace work or not, but um, they used to tie the, them into individual, like I would done the wee parcels, but they used to do big parcels, maybe five to a bale, and you had to stamp up the side before they wrapped the main, and if you were too quick, you stamped up the side of the paper, and you got into big trouble for that, eh? They would shout, well, oh, what are you done? Like, oh. <gasps> So they had to guillotine that off, take that print off and then start again. But once it was all bailed, you stamped if it was going to Africa or wherever it was on the top, you know, and then away it went. Hey, that was, it was good fun. And then the learners were good fun. But once you got to counting and overhauling, it was down to business, like, you know, it was good. Yeah. But as I say, once the system changed, I just, there was an awful lot of people just couldn't get enough paper. It was like getting as much as they could, you know, and it was quite, I felt it was quite a lot of greed there, you know, and I'd had enough, you know. How long had you been there at that point? I think it was about eight years I was there, eh? But some some women had been there all their life, you know, some, quite a lot of ladies, eh, a lot of old maids there, you know, and the stories I was told that some of them had lost their fiancés in the war and um, never met anybody else and just kept working there, eh? But they, they, they were nice. They were good people. A lot of people used to say, oh, the paper mill, the paper mill. But there was a lot of good, nice people worked there, you know. There were some rogues as well, but there were some really nice people. But was the rivalry between the, the mill girls and the office girls? Not really, because, no. I don't, maybe Cathy thought there was, but we didn't see an awful lot of them. The only time I ever had to go to the offices if there was a little bit, some count, uh, some overhaul, I thought she hadn't and should have had more in her pay and I had to go and get it sorted out and I would walk along the offices, but that would be the only time. No, no, I wouldn't say there was right. No, I don't think so. Were you in a trade union, Turn the Mill? We were in a union, yeah. Mm -hmm. And how effective was that, do you think? Not really sure, I don't remember very much. They just used to come around, I think it was either every month or every week, paid our two bob or whatever it was we paid. Um, we never went on strike when I was there. 
Uh, but I think if you had a grievance, you could go to this guy. His surname was Bostock. Um, I think he would sort any grievance you had out. So I, I suppose it was quite effective in its time. Yeah. What changes did you see over the years? In the paper mill. We started playing music in the finishing house. That was a big change. They had the radio on and they had speakers. It knocked your concentration a bit when you were counting right enough, but you got used to it. Um, we had, I don't know, it's, there wasn't an awful lot of changes. That, as I say, I wasn't there an awful long time, eight years, you know, and that took in the cutters, the whole thing. As a counter, it was probably three or four years, maybe five, I appreciate but um, not a lot of changes. We had used to get guys coming like the time in motion and they just confused us. <laughs> when they went away, we fell back into the, the way we always done it, but um, no, I, I don't remember an awful lot of changes, see? not the time I was in. Did the time in motion guys ask you to do work differently? Slightly differently, yes, yes. But I did, I did years, years and years later. Um, my sister was home from Canada, um, and she worked in the business. She worked very well. She went went to Canada at twenty one, so she was only about six years in the paper mill. And one time she was home, all the finishing house had changed. There was a big change on then, and you could get see, shown round the paper mill. And it was that was a big change. We went and the over overhaul was done with an like an electronic eye. We looked at the paper and pulled out the broke. You know that's what it was called the broke. And then this machine counted the paper just down the side, like where I had to. This thing just went there, and we were amazed at all the 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 work we had to do because it was hard work. You know, heavy work. Do you know what kind of repercussions that had for the workforce bringing this automated machinery? Oh, it would cut back a lot, a lot, yeah. I mean, it would probably just take one guy to look over two or three of these machines or electronic things, you know. It would cut back drastically, I think. When you went for this look around um, years later and it was automated, was it quieter or...? Yes, a lot quieter, yeah. Dusty? Yeah. I didn't notice it being dusty, no, no. It seemed well, it was seemed alien to Joyce and I because it wasn't a finishing house like we were in, you know. Um, I, I do have some photos if I look somewhere off the finishing house with the ladies overhaul, and you know, uh, I'm not on it. My mum was on it, and my, some of my aunties, eh? but um, it was nothing like that. It was very sort of clinical. All these machines going, eh? but that was the way it had changed. Yeah. How did your job affect your family life, if at all? Not really, no. I had no children then. It was uh, children came much later on. Um, not really. My husband went in the dockyard. He would be in first, or he had a, he had a lighter job than I had. I think he, oh, he was an electrician. He eh? um, didn't affect family life at all. Working in the paper mill. Did you work a regular shift pattern? Yes. Yeah. Can you remember what that was? I think it was seven till quarter past five at night, you know. Um, then they started, when the reason my mother came back, she got part time. I didn't go part time, I was too young to do that. Eh? Um, but they made part time, they had part time workers, then full time workers. But you worked, started at seven, but then you got a breakfast about, I think it was quarter to nine to quarter to ten. Um, and then you had your lunch. And then you finished at five, quarter past five, eh? Yeah. It's quite a long day. But I think when you're young, you don't... I couldn't have done what my mum done. I would never have wanted to go back to that at her age, eh? When I think, say, her age, she was probably in her 40s. You know, but to me, she was... I wouldn't have done that, eh? But um, she wanted to her holidays, and she wanted this, that, and the other, so she, she worked with it. Did a lot of women go back? Yes, they did, yeah. Most of my friends' mothers, I can, all went back when the part-time uh, uh, came in, yeah. Part-time jobs, were they introduced to try and get all the women back? I think it was, I think because 
probably some of the younger folk as it went on probably didn't want to go to the paper mill, you know, and they maybe needed uh, the older women to come back and, and fill in because there's quite a few came back, yeah. Social life. You've kind of touched on this a few a few times, but what was the social life around the mill? Uh, it was quite good, actually. Yeah, it was quite good. <laughs> um, well, they used to have the paper mill trip. I don't know if you knew about Herd, but did you hear, really tell you about that? No. Um, it, this was the good old days. They used to hire a train, believe it or not, a full train, and we all got on this train. I wasn't at them all. There was a, one to Aberdeen, one to Whitley Bay, one through to Largs, where we went on the Waverley. I'm talking about the whole factory. That's the three I can... Maybe it was another one, but that's the three I remember. And... Um, they used to get on it in Rickeden Station. Hundreds of folk that worked in the mill all went and we got away. And before the the train was at the station, I guess the men had a wee whiskey or a wee beer or something like that. Uh, and we got our lunch and we got our tea. And then we were brought home at night. That was a paper mill trip. Never had anybody getting left there, you know. But um, it was good. In fact, I had... Uh, as I say, my, my dad used to have a cine camera and he's, he wasn't very good at it, but he, he took it down to the station one of the mill trips that they went and you saw some of the people, but then there'd be blank bits and this bits and that bit. Uh, so years ago, my, my eldest daughter took all the, the movie cat things and got them on DVDs. And it sees, you see a bit of the folk coming to the station and getting on the train and they're all happy and waving and it was good. And then we had, I always had a, a ladies' uh, night in the Queen's Hotel in Verkeering, you know where that is? Yeah, in the high street. We had a party there, it was good fun, yeah. And then we always went late night dancing on a Friday. Where was what, that? Up in St Margaret's, the dance hall in Dunfermline. Working in the morning is still up at seven o'clock, but then we didn't really drink, you know. It's uh, there was no bar in the dance halls then, you know. I'd have got slaughtered if I had, you know, when I came home. But um, no, it's a good social life. A lot of parties and little trips and parties in the Queens and lots. Of, and then we had parties in the distillery. Used to be a distillery in Inverkey then. Do you know Inverkey at all? No, it's down near the station. There's a big, uh, a modern sort of flats. Well, there there used to be a distillery. It wasn't in operation then, up and I can remember. And sometimes we used to have mill parties in there, like for the whole, for the whole shebang, you know, in the distillery. How were these all paid for? The company used to pay it for the mill trip, the whole mill trip. I don't know what it cost them to get a train, but um, no, it was a full train to Whitley Bay, Aberdeen, doing the water, it was great, yeah, we thought it was, oh, it was great, yeah. Did you girls go out, um, say on a Friday afternoon when you finished work, did you all go out to the pubs, clubs yourselves? No, no, not really, no. Um, PD was a Thursday, so we used to trip up to the high street, you know, come up the Mowbray, do you know where it is, the Mowbray? Perfect. Just at the side of this building that comes up here. And Inverkeen was quite a good shopping place then, you know, it was quite, had a lot of wee shops and that. We'd go to the chemist and buy stuff and, and to get your mum something and that, you know, on a Thursday when you got paid. Friday night, as I say, was late night dancing, eh? But no, we didn't really go to the pubs much until much later on, eh? You know. Did you have friends outside of the mill? Um. Probably not. I think most of them were, were um, worked in the paper mill. Yeah. No, f that was a big employer in this area. You know. Um, probably not. I'd never thought about that before, but probably not. It wasn't until I moved away due to my husband's work that I had to sort of branch out a bit. You know. Uh, down to it was outside London I lived, and it was quite alien to me. It took me a while to get used to it because used to Inverkeering, eh? And then we got transferred out to Saudi, you know, so that was a big change. But previous to that, no, a lot of my friends worked in the mill. 
Would you say that a lot of your schoolgirl friends went to the mills? Um, I'd say half and half, you know. So quite a few done office work, librarians, a couple of school teachers, um, but half and half, I would say, went to the mill. It wasn't a, it wasn't a bad place to work. Some people kind of turned their noses up the mill girls, you know. But I think of it, uh, I think it was um, you didn't hear a lot of swearing because there was all these maiden ladies, you know, and they didn't allow it. Um, it was no, it wasn't a bad place to work in. Why did the girls have a bad name then, in collectively? Where? When? Uh, why? Sorry. Why? No, I, I think it was just the, a wee bit of the fact that you were a mill girl, you know. Um, it was like, oh, you work in the paper mill. Yes, yeah, I do, you know. But um, there was no bad girls really, you know. Oh, I suppose a bit wild sometimes, too, but um, I quite enjoyed it. What was your favourite memory of Inverkeithing and the paper mill back in those days? It was sort of like a family, you know, it really was like a family because um, even now when I go to the History Society, there's, uh, I don't know if Janice McDougall's coming to speak to you. She's her mother worked the same time as my mum did. Audrey, that's had the stroke, her mother was in the mill. Um, it was just, it was just like a, wee, a family, you know? It really was like a family. It was nice. You know? In the Keating, apparently, has changed a wee bit over the years. What would you hope for the town going forward? I would like to see some of the shops getting opened up and um, making it more um, shoppable, if you like, if that's the word. You know, there's there, there's an awful lot missing off the high street now. You know, there's so many empty places, which is common in a lot of places now. Eh? But, I mean, when I was a, a child, my mum had no need to go... Well, there was no supermarkets, really, a big supermarkets, but um, she'd done all the shopping in the square. You know, the square, there was maybe four or five grocers, a couple of chemists, wool shop, haberdashery, everything, you know, the, and the butchers, plenty of butchers, you know, and all of a sudden it just it's just changed. Eh? And the Queen's Hotel is looking very run down now. That was a lovely hotel. It was a royal hotel. That was nice, but... I think the square is looking tired, you know, it could do with getting spruced up a bit. But I think that's a lot, a lot of places are like that now. It's quite sad, it is, see, because, um, I mean, we had Lammas Fair once a year and the Highland Games and there was a lot of things, see. Eh? I, I, I was telling my granddaughter, well, she's only just gone to high school, eh? But she likes to hear stories. And it was about getting married and that. I said, oh, when we got married, I mean, we had a, when you showed your presence, it would be in one of the local places, like the wee old-fashioned building that's op opposite the big town clock church. We used to show presents in there. And then, I don't know where the wheelbarrow came, but it used to get put in a wheelbarrow and hurled <laughs> along the high street into all the pubs. And you had a pole filled with salt. Have you heard about that? Yeah. And then the men in the pub would put money in it and then you went to the next pub and the same thing, eh? Um, and they said, what? They don't call me granny, they call me Norny. Um, what Norny, you got put in a I said, yep. I said, I thought my back was broken by the time I got out of it. I said, but I, I, still, ha I still have the money that was in, in that poor thruppany bits and the shillings and that, you know. But the, nothing like that happens anymore, eh? But you just, whether you wanted it or not, you were in that battle when you were taking it all. And there was a lot of pubs in Inverkeithen, you know? Were you dressed up? Yeah, you had silly hats and stuff on, you know, but you were taking through it around the pubs, yeah. But that is not, they wouldn't do it to happen. That wouldn't happen now, eh? To, to, anyway. Well, I think that's all my questions for now. Is there anything you would like to add? Not really. I hope I just haven't slavered on too much, you know, but um, it's a pity you couldn't get us all of the same age together. You would probably get a lot more stories than I've told you, you know, but um, 
I quite miss these times. I do. You know. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. I was kind of a bit nervous about it, but you've made it very easy.